Good morning. So, from the previous video, I um, I was having some issues with the waypoints, and then I commented on some of the, the flight stuff, and I talked a little bit about my graphics card that had been running stock. So, just before I go in and mess with textures and other graphical settings beyond the, one, the two that I have changed, I wanted to put a, a reasonable overclock on my 1080 Ti again and see if it had any appreciable difference in kind of what it was doing. So that's what I've done in this video and instead of flying around San Francisco or anywhere I've not flown before or done a comparison, I came back to Chicago to make essentially the same loop that I did previously around uh, um, Midway Meigs where it used to be and then back into Chicago for parking. So that's what I am doing right now The card is running between 2030 and 2050 with a few climbs up to 2060 um, I set the Typical limit um, typically the card likes to run around 1081 uh, millivolts MB whatever um, and it will cap at 1093 so I set uh, 1081 at 2062 megahertz. This game doesn't really peak that much like Grand Theft Auto, PUBG, or some of the others. What this game kind of does is dip and lag a bit where the usage kind of plummets and then it returns to normal. So different type of behavior because the game operates and functions very differently. Um, the other thing I did was I put a slight overclock on the memory, which seemed really to make the largest difference over anything, but again, the overall improvements were pretty negligible. This flight had fewer uh, live players in it. There were a couple, um, but not as many as last time. The weather really wasn't all that different. I think some of the cloud types were a little different, but overall, not much of a difference. So my average FPS right now at this point was in the lower end of 20 a few climbs up into the mid 20s but for the most part we were hanging out around 22 i believe as an average for this part it's there on the screen um sorry it's a little small i kind of ran at a funky resolution so that i could keep that off to the side of my central monitor and not have uh, any issues in flying um i tried to do the same thing with the camera move it around pan around do kind of different angles and viewpoints so Right now in this part of the city, there's a lot going on. When we get closer to Lake Michigan and downtown area, we actually kind of climbed up towards the high 20s and a few moments in the 30s, simply in my opinion because of the dark lake was um, covering the bulk of the actual screen and what we were rendering. So I don't think that had a whole lot to do with what was going on. It, it did have to do with the improvement because it cut down on it, but the last time, I again, that was kind of similar behavior to what we... Saw in the previous video. So, overall, from what it appears, at least with my older graphics card, it's not crazy old, but it is older. Overclocking it did not really seem to make any appreciable difference to my FPS and to the overall performance of the game. And you can see the GPU's not going too crazy in, in what it's doing. Typically, in a lot of games, it'll just be pegged at 99, 98%. And then when the game asks for a bit more, it'll peak at 100% for a moment for those asks, and then it'll come back down. There's a few moments where, for whatever reason, it, it is being maximized, like right there. And this is kind of where I was getting higher FPS, because again, if you see, there's the lake right in front of me. We're not rendering as much activity, and I'm in the cockpit, which seemed to change things as well. So we're in the mid to high 20s with a couple points in the 30s at this point. So when I go back outside the aircraft and everything else is being rendered on screen and there's more going on, then the FPS did drop again. And you can start seeing some of those dips in the performance kick in until we kind of stabilize things. So it's, it's just kind of interesting to watch the way the game was handling the utilization on it. My CPU really wasn't being all that utilized. Temperatures were fine. Nothing was going crazy. So even computationally I don't think my GPU was really being hit that hard and I think that's because it's more bandwidth of streaming in the textures from Bing the graphics cards really just applying certain layers and distances to it which is where I think the biggest performance improvements are actually going to come from from within the the graphical settings in the menu this isn't really a GPU problem from what I'm seeing at this point I'm not saying 
I'm correct, but my belief is this is not really a GPU problem. Um, the GPU utilization is up, but in other games where you're dealing with a lot more special effects and a lot more activity that comes and goes very quickly, those are the games that I notice the GPUs really pegged at closer to 100% like this, but the heat and the noise off the radiators really ramps up. And that part of that is the CPU being part of the loop, but a lot of that is the GPU activity and what it's doing. So you can see right there, I'm I'm down at 19, then back up to 2050, then 2030, then down to 19 and 12. It's all over the place. Most shooters and other games like that are usually fairly consistent. They may dip a, a little bit, 10, 15, 20 megahertz, but I'm dropping 50, 60, 70 megahertz off and on and then climbing back up. So it's all over the place as different things happen. And that's why I think most of it's just streaming in the textures and bandwidth and things on that front. So I think in the next video, we'll take a look at a lot of the, the game settings and play around a little bit with dropping some things, increasing some things, and just see if we can make an appreciable difference to the FPS without really impacting the experience at all. Um, and I'm pretty positive that this will be very doable such as just those minor tweaks to reflections and texture qual and not texture shadow quality that I made previously just taking them from ultra to high giving give me a, about 2 fps in stability overall um so I have a pretty good feeling we'll be able to get much closer to a stable 30 fps and again this game is very very flyable at 20 fps it sounds crazy but it's not the type of game that requires high fps to play and twitch through um and likewise if you're doing a flight in an airliner or something and you're getting higher up in the sky the textures and the, the after effects and things that are being applied are going to be very different so it's going to be a totally different type of situation and it's not going to have the same amount of detail and information to render so that's what we'll do in the next video. We'll, we'll go through the settings and we'll make minor edits and just kind of do some of the basic same type of things. We'll probably go to uh, DFW and just do some quick flights or maybe we'll stay here in the Chicago area because we've done all the others here and just see what happens. So the only difference on this flight was they had me take off on a different runway. So I had to fly uh, downwind and then come around. But uh, this was this was fun. I like playing in the area of doing it previously. We'll talk... Uh, a little bit about some of the menu problems because I, I I think I've been doing all of these with live so I think I'll, I'll tweak some of the weather and time settings but I've got some other problems with those that I want to talk about in the in another video as well so a couple things in the pipeline for you thank you guys for watching and we'll see you then